Hey guys, welcome to Rebuilding the Beast. I'm your host, Bessel Zazili, NBA player turned podcast host. And on this show, I'm going to have a lot of my inspiring friends come on to share with you their rebuilding journeys. I hope you can take the tips from their lives and apply it to your life as well. Oh, and don't forget to hit subscribe, like, comment, share with a friend. Uh, yeah, all the things. All right, I'll see you guys soon. Final question that I always end the podcast on is, if you could talk to your younger self, and that could be either Jimmer in college, or it could be you in the league, or whatever it is. If you could talk to your younger self, yeah. tell him. I would tell him, you know, the one thing that for me, um, you know, when I was when I was younger, my whole goal, everything was always to make it to the NBA, right? To make it to the NBA. That was it. I just wanted to make it to the NBA. That's all I thought about. That's all I wanted to do. And that's not the, the regret I had. The regret I had was that the fact that I didn't make any goals past that. Like that was it, right? So now it's like when I got to the NBA, I was like, okay, so now what do I do, right? It's like, I didn't have any goals to be like an all-star in the NBA, have any goals to be a rookie of the year. I didn't have any goals to be a venture capitalist or to, you know, have a certain amount of, you know, friends or something like that after the NBA or in the NBA. Like I just had that one goal and it, it served me well to get there. But then at that point, it's like, what do I do afterwards? So now I've tried to figure out like what, how to make goals and reach goals, um, you know, for myself and, uh, you know, for my, my future career and all that stuff. So I, I wish I would have thought about that a little bit more when I was growing up life after basketball, life, you know, inside of the NBA, life, you know, doing different things with family and all that stuff. But I just didn't think about it um, because I had this one singular mindset, which, like I said, it made me, you know, be able to get to where I needed to be. But then afterwards, it created a, you know, a little bit of a bumpier path. But um, yeah, I wouldn't change that. I love it. But that was probably what I tell myself. My last question to every podcast is the same. It is, if you now could talk to young Wesley that hated his name, that couldn't find a role model, that was angry and didn't have hope, was trying to figure it out, product of his environment, you could talk to him what would you say to him talk to old wesley <laughs> west back then <laughs> um i talked to west back then uh, i think the, the main thing that i would say would be have you took time to know you? Have you took time to love you? And again, I'm coming from the point of already being lost because I think in my whole life I was lost and never knew what direction I could go in. But I always say that if someone, I, I give it to people, but even if I was aware of self-love, if I was aware of creating an identity, then that, that would have shifted my whole life. And mm -hmm. so, it's not, oh man, life is gonna get better, you know, follow the journey. Like, life changes when you become aware of who you are. Then that's, that'd be the only thing I tell them. Because that journey, it could be 50 years old and now you're ready to step up. But once you become aware of who you are, your life change. And that's the only advice. No money tied to it, no fate. Mm. Man, it's all inside. You figure out who you are from the inside out, and everything on the outside changes. A question every time is if you could talk to your younger self, mm. young India Sean, mm -hmm. and you could give her some advice Aww. or a life talk, <laughs> what would you say to her? I. I would tell baby India hmm. to believe in herself, as cliche as that sounds. Um, stop doubting. Um, stop comparing. 
and really trust that you have what it takes to fulfill all of your dreams. I always end the podcast with one question, and it's my favorite question. Okay. Alexa Mansour, if you could speak to young Alexa mm-hmm. that is getting bullied and was unsure of herself mm-hmm. and um, just accepted whatever people said about her, if you could talk to her and give her some advice, mm-hmm. what would you say to her? I would just, I would look at her and I'd say, you're awesome. I think that little Alexa really needed someone to tell her, like, you're awesome and you're going to be really cool one day. (laughs) Because I know that if a little, that if little Alexa met me right now, she like, she'd fangirl so hard. So, everything's going to be okay, little girl. Now, my final question to every podcast is my favorite. It is... And you kind of started to talk about it earlier. But the question is, what would you say to your younger self? What would you say to young Corey? What advice would you give young Corey as he was battling depression and bipolar disorder and dealing with abusive, an abusive mom and, and all the things that you were dealing with? What advice would you give young Corey? Honestly and truly, I think about this all the time because I always revert back to when I was in that car. Um, and I just... Uh, I just want to go back and let myself know that the position you're in isn't your fault, no matter what people tell you, no matter what your family tries to say. The position that you are in right now isn't something that you should have ever been in, that you are worthy of love, um, and that you deserve to have people in your life who love you, who respect you, who care for you, who you can depend on. When I first came homeless, I didn't know who I was going to reach out to and ask for help. I had no clue because I had spent so long isolating myself from everyone. And the only person I reached out to was my Aunt Kristen. And luckily she took me in because Lord knows where I would be right now without her. Um, And she helped me get into a shelter and everything else. And it's just uh, know that you are worthy of love. Know that one, it's not your fault. And two, even if you fuck up today, get back up tomorrow and try. Because you're going to get there. And this is not where your story ends. If anything, this is where it begins. I have one question mm-hmm. for the end of this podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, if you could talk to your younger self mm-hmm. and give her some advice, and this mm-hmm. could be Crystal when she's leaving Nigeria and coming to America, mm-hmm. what would your advice be? What would my advice be? Huh? Crystal leaving Nigeria and coming to America was... She was an interesting person, and I always wanted to know. So I'll just tell my young self to just chill out, right, relax. Like, Mm -hmm. everything will work out the way it's supposed to. Um, Of course, you work hard, but know how to relax and not take yourself too seriously. Beautiful. My final question, which is always my favorite. Mm -hmm. If you could talk to your young self, if you could say something to young Chloe, as she's making the decision to go to college or at four or six or 12, it depends on which part of your life and what you're starting. Mm-hmm. What advice would you give young Chloe? Mm. I think that I would primarily just say to, to lean into the belief that it's possible and that everything is possible. I think that it can be so difficult when you're so little and the, the obstacles are so large, right? But I think just the daily reminder that it's possible and that just the you can do it, the, you know? I think ultimately, bottom line, I always think about, you know, I think I was sharing, when I pray, I just pray to be alive. I just pray for health and life. And I want that for all, everyone, you know? And then the rest of it, I'm willing to work for. And I think I would just remind my younger self that you can do it, whatever it is. Like, don't let fear override your personal faith. You right now, with everything that you've seen, Mm -hmm. with your wife and your your daughter and your bandmates, 
and the whole journey you've experienced so far. Yeah. If you could talk to young Kevin. Ooh. And hmm. Honestly, you could just talk to him. You could give him advice, or you could just sit with him. It'll. Man, that's a good question. There's more inside of you than you could ever know. I know at this very moment, you are scared out of your mind because you don't know how this is going to work. I know that this is a path that doesn't seem sure or medicine seems so sure. Trust God fully because he has every single part of this path mapped out for you. And you're going to see parts of you that you didn't even realize was inside of you. Mm -hmm. If you trust God in the path, don't be anxious because there's a lot of anxiety <laughs> ridden moments. Remember who sent you on this path for love and to share love. Path, you're going to grow into a, to somebody that you're going to be very proud of. Mm. That's what I would tell him. I'm going to call it with this final question that I ask, I ask every guest. And it's my favorite question on the podcast. It is, All right. if you could talk to your young self, the young Marcellus, and you could talk to him about life ahead and all the things that you were going to experience and give him some advice, or just talk to him. What would you say to young Marcellus? Man, you're going to make me cry on that one. God dang. You know what? <sighs> the toughest part about answering that question is not any of the things we really discussed. It's I was built for this journey. I was built for this, this ride. I wasn't built to lose my mom. I wasn't built to lose my best friend. Because so much of what I do is selfless. Like even playing football when it hurt and I hated it because it hurt. Even though I was great at it, it hurt. I would muster up more courage because I was doing it for others. And then when you look at your paradigm and you look at how you build up your love in this world and it gets knocked down from the top. Like I was a teddy bear. I was a mama's boy. Mm -hmm. And my mom passed away when I was 30 years old. I don't know if I had known that when I was young that I would enjoy all of this external success, but I couldn't share with my mom would I have pursued it the same way I was doing it for my mom. And that hurts. It hurts to be here right now and not have my mama here. It hurts to not have my best friend here who I lost when I was young. It, it really does. So to answer that, like in terms of job and occupation and courage and picking myself up and rebuilding the beast, dog, I was I was put on this planet to do just that. But I don't think I was put here to experience all of that and not have them as my passenger. So to answer it, I would have prepared that young version for like, yo, that level of heartache you're gonna experience, be prepared for. And I'm still not prepared, dog, as you can hear by my response. Like, it's like weird. I live in like an alt universe sometimes. Like, I'm doing this for my kids. I'm doing this for my wife. I'm doing this for Marcellus. I'm doing this for my family. And then literally it feels like someone lets some air out of that balloon. Mama not here. Corby's not here. And others. But it really doesn't leave me in any moment that... No matter what I do, what, no matter what I achieve, it feels a little incomplete because of the void they left in my heart. I yeah. can't leave here. Our time is up, yeah. but I can't leave here without asking you this question. Mm. It's always my final question. Um, it is, if you could talk to your younger self mm. come to school, um, about the world that you're experiencing now, and you could give him some advice or just talk to him. Um, 
bunch of stuff that I I would say. Um, I'm trying to. It's hard for me to pinpoint one. Maybe there's a few that I would I would tell my younger self. You know, I would say to my younger self. Um, that the world is inherently a really good place, a really beautiful and bountiful place. And that it's just my mindset that prevents me, my limiting beliefs that prevent me from seeing it. That, that's like, I think that's one really important takeaway for, for my younger self, you know? Younger self, you know, I was playing football, so everything was competitive, you know? Everything was like this race, you know? Like, can I outwork, can I, you know? And it's like, actually, can we all win together? I think it's a really important concept. Um, and today it's like, I don't see um, a situation in anything. It's all win-win. Like, how do I win with you, you know? And I think it's, it's, it's really amazing. And then I would tell myself, um, you know, my upbringing is Christianity, you know, like, and, and you, as a, undoubtedly you, you, you're, you know, the dogma and all that stuff is, you know, and sort of like, I found Buddhism and Taoism and and uh, um, you know the 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 the, the Torah. I, I, every religion, you know, like has such beautiful things in it. It's as though there was one idea of consciousness, and everybody took pieces from it and interpreted themselves their way. You know, and uh, I would tell myself like, like expand your your mind into all these realms because that's where you're gonna get the complete picture and uh and it's universal when you have that like it's hard to judge someone or hard to be to be like feel separation or us versus them when you like ingrain yourself in their culture when you're with them when you're when you understand their religion when you understand how they're how they they're brought up and you understand the past that they walk and at the end of the day, you'll never know the complete picture, but you can go a long way. And you just find that we're all the same. We're really all the same, you know? And anytime that we get, when you see the news or when you see something like saying like one group did this to another group or like there's a war and whatnot, like, you know, there's that there's a person on the other side and they're scared too. And they're trying to make sense of all this. And you realize that you know, it's not, it's very easy to be like, those people are evil, those people are not It's not like that at all. It really is. Hey, Fest is here. I hope you liked that episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and here's some more episodes that you might like. Uh, I mean, on this side. <laughs>